<laughs> no, you know, see, really, I should have an astrologer do it because I'm I'm right on the cusp. So um, I, I think I'm a Scorpio. I'm not Scorpio. sure. Scorpio. Yeah, well, I think so. That means we're going to have an affair. Why? What sign are you? I don't know, but I think it's a very good idea, don't you? Well, except that I'm a happily married woman. Oh well, I won't tell any money if you don't. Hey, you're the one who started this whole thing. What sign would you say I am? Ah. Uh... Leo the politician or Gemini the liar. Is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> Dry martini on the rocks, Frank. A double olive, a glass of cocktail sherry, and a vodka daiquiri. Nothing to be alarmed about. It's just a little turbulence. Are you all right? Hmm. Well, I'll feel better, I think, when we've landed. Wherever that is. I can get you something to settle your stomach. Well, I don't think it's my stomach. It's more in the area of my soul. Well, let me know if you need anything. I think the turbulence is behind us now. Um, do you know anything about the Quivele Indians? Only what it says in the brochure. Yes, but they're not mentioned in any of the anthropology books. Well, if they're in the brochure, then you'll find them. Another round? Yeah, just don't stop. Huh? How about you girls? Huh? Oh. Ready? I'll show you what. There you are. Oh, just look at that smile. Tell me something. How can a beautiful creature like you take pleasure in keeping all these nice people's destination a secret from them? Secrets are fun. Don't you think secrets are fun? Telling them is even more fun. Are you going to tell us yours? Okay. If you're game, I am. Which one would you like to hear first? How about the one about your wife? <laughs> Where did you get an idea like that? See, keeping them is even more fun. Excuse me, could you tell me, is that Johnny Delmonico singing? It sounds like him. It's weird. Mm -hmm. On our way to the airport, we've already died. Yeah, and I've never heard this song before. How long before we leave? How long have you two been married? Three or four hours? Uh, no, four hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> Is it that obvious? <laughs> well, you're the only people on board who haven't asked me where we're going, only how soon we're gonna get there. Ah, uh, Mr. Hunsicker, welcome back to the world. Can I get you a drink? Uh, Can I have yeah. some hot hors d'oeuvres coming up? Yeah, sure, uh, bourbon on the rocks. What do we do, run into some bad weather while I was sacked out? No, we've had a very smooth flight so far. But we should have been in Dallas a half hour ago. Dallas? I don't think you're awake yet, Mr. Hunsicker. This is a special charter flight to the portals of Eden. Portals of Eden? Mm-hmm. What portals of Eden? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of joke? I'm supposed to be on flight 17 to Dallas. Well, you must have your dates mixed up, Mr. Hunsicker. I have you right here on the passenger list. Yeah. Mr. Albert A. Hunziker, Space Age Trucking Company of the Bronx. I never made that reservation. No, space was reserved by Mr. Herman Pratt. Do you know Herman Pratt? Oh, sure, he's my partner, the jerk. Where are we, anyway? They got it painted. What's going on here? Hey, 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 friend. Friend. That's just a sample of how this outfit operates. They thought of everything. Why, they won't even tell us where the place is, where we're going. I mean, what country it's in. Personally, I think it's a fabulous idea. Keeps the tourists away, for one thing. What place? The portals of Eden. Look, we gotta turn this aircraft around. I stand to lose a fortune. Hey, it's not the end of the world. Besides, this could be a ball, boy. Man, I don't need fun and games. Give me that bourbon now.
place is such a big secret, then how'd you find out about it? Brochure. Just came in the mail one day. Oh, come on. Somebody's got to know where this place is. There are ways of finding out. I can make an educated guess. Somewhere in Central America. No. No, it's got to be the Caribbean. Look at the photos in there. You name it, they got it. Golf, tennis. I didn't see any pictures like that. It's mainly a sort of health resort, isn't it? Uh, hot baths, massages. No. No, they've got sports fishing. No, there was nothing in my brochure no. about sports fishing. May I? Come here, dining room. Spectacular recreational facilities, exciting new friendships. May I see that, please? I just have to call the people in Texas and postpone that meeting until tomorrow. Just nothing about beauty treatments in here. Now, what in the world would you girls need beauty treatments for? Spoken like a true Gemini. <laughs> Everyone, would you kindly be seated, please? We're about to land at the portals of Eden. Hey! It can't be the Caribbean. It's too soon for the Caribbean. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's too soon for Central America, too. Uh, it's fine by me, kid. The closer we are to Texas, the better I like it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a wonderful Thank time. Thank you. We're so Bye. excited. Bye-bye. Enjoy yourself. Bye-bye. Oh, hey. Bye-bye. Look at that. I should have brought my camera. Go we'll have themselves a spot. Sensational. Welcome, everyone. My name is Seacrest. I am your host here at the Portals of Eden. I trust you all had a very smooth flight. Anything you need during your stay here, anything at all, come to me. Our aim here is to provide a unique recreative experience at all times. If you'll all follow me, the luggage will follow you. If there's something you can do for me, you can get me on a flight out of here. I'm afraid huh? that nothing can be done until tomorrow when we're expecting another group in. I hope that's all right. It's not all right, but it seems like I don't have much of a choice. I'm terribly sorry. Yeah. I wish my husband could see this. Central America, it's gotta be. These volcanoes and this jungle. No, nah, the best bet still seems like the Caribbean. It just feels like the Caribbean. You wanna put some money on it? Sure, $100. Make it two. You can always write home to the old man, right? I don't have to do that. Lyle is very independent. Oh, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Taxi. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the portals of Eden. Would you please sign the guest book? I can't get over it. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, sir. The book is empty. There are no names in it. Yes, you are our first guest of the new season. You'll have the whole place to yourselves until tomorrow when we're expecting another group. Say, uh, uh, listen, fellow, where's the telephone? The telephones are to your right through the arch. Uh. These boys understand some English, but to uh, speak none. We found that everything runs more smoothly that way. And now, of course, I know you'd all like to see your rooms. Excuse me. The Quivela Indians, are they, um... Well, would I need a guide? 
about the day's journey, Reverend. I'll arrange for a guide. I should think you'd be able to set out tomorrow morning. Oh, thank you. Always my pleasure. lady I came to see. Do with me what you will. What's so hot about this place? I could be in Schenectady for crying out loud. We try to tailor our accommodations to the needs and pleasures of our guests. Mr. Woodruff plans to stay here and indulge himself. Mrs. Larrier wants to rest. The Reverend Fellows wishes to research more exotic religions than his own. Your need is to leave. This is a room for a man on the move. A stopover on the way to more important places. You better believe it. Fork stick, rich boy. Please, everyone, it's all right. There is no cause for alarm. The species is absolutely harmless. Calm yourselves. Everything will be better if you avoid antagonizing it. See?
Honey, honey, come on out now. It's all right. The snake's gone. Honey, everything's all right. Come on out. It's all right. Oh. Oh. I know it's silly, but snakes are I'm just... terribly sorry. This is most regrettable. Completely non-poisonous. But I know what a shock it must have been. We see them from time to time on the grounds, but never has one actually entered the hotel. It must have got in through the plumbing somehow. I assure you, it won't happen again. Well, I suppose every Eden has its servant. <laughs> Kids today, you sure got it licked. Yeah? yeah. How's that? Well, look at you, not a care in the world. Here you're all dolled up, dancing your heads off. You don't even know where you're at. We're on our honeymoon. That's where we're at. Mm. What'd you do on yours? What did I do on my? Yeah. What do you say, Woody? Oh yeah, lovely evening, huh? Yeah. Well, this is the night, huh? <laughs> Mind if I join you? <laughs> sure. I was just writing a card to my husband. Oh. Tell him about the little excitement we had this afternoon? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't mention the snake. He's worried enough about me as it is. What's he to be afraid of? You're a big girl. Well, if I were a self-pitying sort of person, I guess you might say I had some kind of a nervous breakdown. Certainly doesn't show. I was just tired, that's all. I just needed a rest from the children. You know, running a home, the carpools, PTA meetings. As soon as Alan saw what was happening, he arranged this vacation. It's much more than we can afford, God bless him, but he'll be joining me in a couple of weeks. Then I won't feel so guilty. What about the kids? Uh, are they coming too? No. No, my, my sister Jeanette is going to take care of them. Mm. She's there right now, helping out. Now, Alan and I decided we would be very selfish. We'd take a second honeymoon all to ourselves. Jeanette's going to redo the apartment while I'm gone. She's a fantastic interior decorator. The children just adore her. So everything's going to work out just fine. Oh, that's great. That's just great. Uh, listen, I, uh... I'll let you finish that car. I didn't wreck it. You look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It feels heavy somehow. I'm afraid it'll all crack open if I smile too much. <laughs> <laughs> Join me for dinner. Mm -hmm. I can't get over this. Fantastic. How about a drink? Oh How about that, huh? Something positively unreal about this place. Mm. Yes, I know what you mean. There is something unsettling about actually getting what you've always wanted? Oh, don't do that. You mustn't do that. So many people are afraid of closeness. But here we're free. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Guess what? Yes, I am afraid of closeness. And I, I wish you'd stop lying to me. How am I lying? You don't mean closeness, you mean contact. No. I mean closeness. How could you? You're married. What makes you? Oh. 
Give me the stewardess for play. Well, I was married, but uh, I'm not now. I'm divorced. Oh, for heaven's sake, I didn't think about that. Ah, uh, you see? Really? Cross my heart. did something wrong. I did something wrong, didn't I? I'm not divorced. My wife won't let me go. She loves me, she says. She loves me. She needs me. She can't live without me. Every time I try to leave her, she either gets sick or tries to kill herself. There's nothing that woman won't do, nothing. She has no pride, none, none at all. She's even called me up at another woman's apartment and begged me to come home. She loves me, she forgives me. I'm sick of it. Then, of course, I always feel guilty for what I've done, for causing so much pain, causing her so much misery, anxiety. And for not loving her the way she loves me. I try to make it up to her, but... Well, that's the way it goes. That's the way she holds me. The only way she knows how. Through tears, illnesses, medicines, even minor surgery. Oh, it's a pity. For her, as well as for me, she... She had a lot going for her once, but she threw it all away. Now she just exists. I hardly ever see her out of her bathrobe anymore. That's why I came here. A place nobody knows about. It's the only way I could get away from her. Huh? Why are you smiling at? You don't know how much like your wife I'd be. Like Rita? Oh, you're not all like her. If I got involved with you, I'd get clutchy. I'd hang on and hang on because I'd be so afraid you'd run away. And then the next thing I'd know, you'd be running away. How are you getting involved? I think I'm crazy, but would you, would you check it? What? Oh. Not even an angle. Thank you.
These tropical storms at this time of year are not unusual, although the one last night was of more than ordinary ferocity. The electricity, as I'm sure you've noticed, is gone. I apologize for the failure of our air conditioning, but it can't be helped. I'm afraid our generator was struck by lightning and... What about that plane that was coming in today? I'm afraid there is nowhere for it to land. The landing strip has been rendered inoperable. There are trenches all across it, some of them six feet deep. Where will the telephone service be restored? I gotta call my people in Texas. It's uh, difficult to say. For the moment, we are isolated. Well, what about a road? There's got to be a road. No, that is none out of the valley. That would have made the portals of Eden too accessible to the outside world. Mm. Everything here was flown in. Yeah. Well, Please, ridiculous. there is no cause for alarm. Although our refrigeration is electric, the food will keep another day. And the liquor supply is more than adequate if you don't mind a warm drink. Well, what about water? It is enough in our roof tank to last uh, two days, I estimate, provided we use it for drinking only. I'm sorry. Hopefully help will have arrived by then. Well, if you can't arrange things any better than this, you have no right asking the kind of money you do. Of course. Your money will be refunded, if that's what you wish. What is that smell? What is that? <laughs> Executed by lightning. That's all I need. No telephones. No air conditioning. No electricity. And now all this contaminated water. I'm sorry, sir. This area is restricted to employees only. Oh, come on, man. This isn't just another day at Happy Acres. We gotta get out of here. Well, what is it you're looking for, Mr. Hunsicker? Perhaps I can help. I don't know. Something. Anything. Something to attract attention. When I see it, I'll know. What's in there? It's just a storeroom. Let's take a look. That is nothing there. That I'll be the sir. judge of that, all right? Unlock it. Sir, it's... Unlock it or I'll break it down. What are you trying to pull, black man? It's useless, Mr. Hunsicker. Lightning struck the antenna and the insides are burned out. I saw no sense in fostering a false hope. Who says it's false? I used to do this in the Navy. Give me some spare parts, lamp. I had no idea. The set belonged to the previous manager. How does it look? Can't tell yet. <laughs> It'll take some time. Tell me something, Seacrest. How come you got no Caucasian help in this place? Does it bother you? Well, you know, usually at least a manager in a place like this. There is no place like this, Mr. Hunsicker. Helen? Helen. I'm in, Ellen. Sorry. You can have to let me in. My medicine's in there. David, what's the matter? I'm touching angina. Had a heart attack last month. Oh, it was, it was just a mild one, that's all. Just a mild one. Say, why why don't you say something? Are you all right? Mm -hmm, sure. 
Uh, the pills don't take too long. Just a few minutes. <laughs> hey, you know something? You're pretty. No. No, you... No. No, you really are. <laughs> you don't need that... that pudding all over your face. David, are you sure you're okay? Come here. <laughs> David, I know we're an awful mess here. And I should be frightened, but I'm not. I'm happy. Maybe it has something to do with coming close to death. I wasn't close to death. Just a, what they call a warning, that's all. Well, I was. I was bitten by a dog, and I turned out I was allergic to the rabies shots. Oh, that could be serious. Well, it was. Anyway, I think we appreciate what we have more when we come close to losing it. In any case, I'm sure glad you didn't die. So am I. It's funny, though. What is? On the trip down, I was talking with uh, the Reverend uh, John Fellows, and he told me that he almost died, almost drowned. No kidding. No, that's what he said. Somebody pulled him out the last minute, and as a result of what happened, he's been going through a whole sort of questioning of his faith. Huh. Well, what's the matter? I was wondering where it happened, at the beach or what? I don't know, he didn't say. Why? Well... Did you notice his luggage? Beach bag? Beach bag. Hold on, Sally. Oh, please, do you have to stand so close? It's too hot. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm just trying to help I'm the man. sorry. Is that all you can ever say? That's what you said when you ran the car into a telephone pole, too. I'm sorry. Look, I almost killed us and two other people. What'd you expect me to do, recite oh, limericks? The trouble is, Lyle, you don't mean it. You just say it to get by. Rich boy. What's bothering you? Do it. Yeah. What? Can I have that now, please? Well, I'm going to tell you, if you're not careful, what is bothering you. All right, I'd like to know. You want me to tell you right here? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm going to be taking a trip tomorrow morning. The Indian tribe I've been looking for is only a few miles from here. You can't take that food. That food's for all of us. I've already talked with Mr. Seacrest. I have his permission. He assures me help will be here very soon. We're not certain of that. Well, look in here, Mrs. Larry. I'm taking very little. It's no more than my share. This trip is very important to me. You see a bunch of Indians? Quivela Indians. They have an ancient ceremony, Mrs. Larry. Capable of great mystical experience. And I am hoping to discover if my faith has any meaning. And you think some savages can show you that? Visions are visions. They will have theirs. And I will have mine. Well, I just don't Good see news, I let's what... hope. Mr. Hunsicker has the radio working. This is WB2 XZZ. It's an emergency transmission. Emergency. Mayday. Do you read me? Over. You'll have to give me that one again, old buddy. I got some noise on this end. Uh, emergency transmission. Emergency. Call letters WB2 XZZ. Mayday. Can you read me now? Over. Yeah, we took the kids over there on Sunday. They had a boat. It's even bigger Disneyland, you know. I didn't hear you. Mayday! Mayday! We need help here. Can you read me? Over! Oh, yeah, the car's running fine. It's the best investment I ever made. Look, old buddy, I can hardly hear. I got some chatter here now. It's, it's jamming me pretty bad. I'll sign off for now. SOS! 
This is an SOS call. We need help. Answer! I said I got some kind of chatter here. I'll get back to you tomorrow night. This is KB6, XYZ, signing off. Receiver's working fine. I'll have to check out the transmitter again. Can you fix it? All I can do is try. I came here to get away from pressure. I, I'm not supposed to have any pressure. Why don't I take you up to your room, Mrs. Larry? No, uh, I, I, I don't want to go to my room. It's like an oven in my room. Well, I tell you what, let's have a little glass of wine. I think sometimes a little glass of wine settles you no, down. No, no, I don't want a glass of wine, especially when I'm upset. And uh, do you want to take a walk? Maybe a little walk will make you feel better. I don't want anything. I just want to get out of here. I just want to go home to my husband and children. I know. We all want to get out of here, Annette. Then why isn't somebody doing something? Why doesn't somebody do something? She's obviously upset. Don't you have something that Frank will like? Don't. Have? Please, don't talk behind my back. I won't stand for anybody talking behind my back. Yes, of course. Annette, I think my room's a little cooler. And I have some refreshing lotion that Miss Big gave me. It'll make you feel cooler, Annette. Come on. Come on. You'll feel better. Come on, honey. I just want to go home. I know. I know. I just want my husband and my children. Well, so much for dinner. Guess we might as well dance. I certainly don't see how that pops. Oh, come on, honey. It's not the end of the world. not a rumble, Lyle. Well, it will be if you'll let me lead. Darling, why don't you do it on the floor, then, instead of on my feet? Another martini, please. Give me a double bourbon, waiter. Oh, boy. No luck, huh? I can hear them. They can't hear me. If there's anything wrong with that transmitter, I can't find it. It just isn't sending. This is a funny question to ask you, I know, but uh, have you had any experience with death recently? With death? My mother died two years ago, but no, I don't know. No, no, I mean you. You personally. Have you been sick or been in an accident or anything of that nature? I'll tell you the truth. I've never been sick a day in my life. Honest to God. Not even a cold. Knock wood. You sure? I mean, you haven't fainted or lost consciousness for some reason or other? Well, I'm a sound sleeper, but I always wake up. <laughs> what are you getting at? Oh, I was just curious, that's all. Yeah. Several people around here have uh, had some pretty close calls recently. Who's that? Oh, yeah, that's quite a dish. She's on the staff. Miss Vic is her name, I think. What's she doing in here? The help never sits in here. Well, maybe she wants some action. Hmm. Yeah, she's looking right at you. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -hmm. are looking at you? <laughs> Looks like we're both wrong. <laughs> One too many, huh? She's dead. should just bury her and forget about it. Secret says she has relatives here. So do I. God knows when I'll see him again. Oh, here. Oh, 
I'm suing this place, did I tell you? What for? Two million dollars. No, I mean on what grounds? I don't know. I'll find something. My brother-in-law's a lawyer. Why doesn't somebody clean up this mess? I hope it'll come just as soon as they come here. I'll help. I'll help. It's all right. What's the problem? Well, we've been waiting uh, here over 20 minutes, and uh, there's nobody in sight. No waiters, no nothing. I'll go take a look. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Oh. Oh. What is it? All the help has left during the night. There is no one left but the eight of us here. Oh. Gone? Where are they going to go? Almost certainly back to their own tribes. <laughs> Although I'm certain now that Miss Fick's death was caused by a can of fruit that spoiled, still these people are ignorant and intensely superstitious. They probably interpreted Miss Fick's death as a bad omen. Well, there sure is nothing good about it. Well, it is upsetting, of course, but on the positive side, it does mean sharing the food supply among what the What food supply? Huh? How do we know the rest of those cans aren't contaminated, too? Oh, God, please, I can't. There are some crackers and some dried fruit and some... Ah, hold it. Just hold it. There's something I don't understand about all this. You said you were expecting all those other guests this week. Well, why aren't the planes at least trying to land? Possibly the plane was too damaged in the storm. No, no, I've been watching. There hasn't been a sign of an aircraft. Nothing. I'm telling you, there's something crazy about this whole thing. Sure, we're cut off. But for crying out loud, there are other people in the world. I agree that the situation has escalated into something more serious than I had anticipated. Yeah. Now he agrees. I have determined to go for help. How? There's a trail across the mountains. You mean on foot? I've done it before. It is a four-day journey to the nearest city. Uh, what city is that? La... I'm sorry. La Paz, right? You know the rules, sir. Hey, you were going to say La Paz, right? That will be a matter of conjecture. Ah, oh, come on. Own up like a man. I should be back by Friday afternoon with food and supplies and some medicines and all... Just come back with transportation out of here, that's all. Forget the food and medicine. See, Christ, have you seen the Reverend Fellows today? Yes, he left on his expedition early this morning. Did you actually see him leave? Yes, it was about uh, 4.30 this morning. Don't you ever sleep? Under the circumstances, I felt it best that I should stay up and keep an eye out. I suggest, incidentally, that you make arrangements for someone to do the same when I'm gone. taking the first watch from 8 until 12. Who will volunteer for the next one? From 12 to 4. Well, come on now. Well, we've all got to lend a hand here. Look, that's the only time it cools off enough around here to get any sleep. Why don't you take it? Maybe I can get some sleep then. Well, I don't see what you're complaining about. I'm the one that has to sleep on the couch. Well, you snore, darling. Oh, is that it? For is grand that I'll, it? I'll take it. What's the matter with you two jokers, anyway? Ask her. Go ahead. Tell him what's All wrong. Right. I'll tell him. All right. Now, we need someone from four and late. I'll take it. Good girl. Well, then, before we get on to the business of rationing water, maybe you ought to go up and uh, look at Annette, see if she's all right, huh? I'll be right back. What about the water? I checked the roof tank this afternoon. We've got less than a quarter of a tank. And yet? I'm 
sorry to have made so much trouble. Oh, Francis. But I'm fine now, really. Sure. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is just rest. I'll look in on you when I come off watch. All right. If you need anything, you know where I'll be. Thank you. Would you like for me to... T no. I I've had enough darkness for a while. That's a good sign. Good night. Good night. Don't forget, rich boy, you owe me $200. Oh, get off my back, will you? Have you seen Eleanor? No, I'm not lately. What's the matter? She mine? disappeared. Want me to come with you? Well, you better stay here. Might be trouble. What are you doing out here? I want to see where you put Miss Vick. Why? I want to prove something to myself. Oh, sweetheart, we were wrong about everything. I talked to Hunsicker. He hasn't been sick a day in his life. I know I'm right, Dave. Annette was dead, stone dead. Nobody could live and lose that much blood. But she did. No, she didn't. She couldn't. She was already dead. Just like the rest of us. All right. If we're dead, where are we? I'd say hell. <laughs> I'd call it heaven. We're the only ones that say so. Dave, something's... Our turn. <laughs> What's Miss Vick got to do with this, anyway? I don't think she died. How could there be death in hell? Let's go take a look. For Ellen's watch? They broke in. They got all the food. Who? The Indians. There must have been. Did you see them? No, I never saw a thing. I don't know how they pulled it off, but the food is all gone, man. All of it? All the decent stuff. All that's left is canned food. A can of these killed Miss Vick? Hey, don't be a fool, Woodruff. Crazy. The man's crazy, I swear. Miss Vick didn't die. Oh, come off it, Woodruff. We carried the body out ourselves. That's right. And it's gone, Al. The body is gone. It's not there. Helen and I weren't going to say anything because, well, for one thing, it sounds pretty bizarre. But now that the rest of the food is gone, I think you should know that it's okay to eat the canned goods. As a matter of fact, it doesn't make any difference whether you do or not. Every one of us in this room is dead already. <laughs> now I've heard everything. 
A witty old boy, I think the heat's got to be. You just think back a minute, you'll realize that we've all had some serious illness or accident in the recent past. I had a heart attack, Helen. I had a fatal allergic reaction to a rabies shot. Reverend Fellows drowned. The Dugans had an accident on the way to the airport. You're crying out loud. I told you already. I have never been sick. I've never had any accidents. Well, neither have I. I mean, who can afford to be sick with a husband and three children to take care of? Well, there you go. Wait a minute, Al. You said you were a sound sleeper, right? Am, buddy. Am. What about you, Annette? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a light sleeper. I usually have to take a pill. Did you take any pills? The night before you flew down here? Oh, yes, I was very excited. Did you take any more than usual? No. No, I didn't. Though... So... Yes? Well, I took a different kind of pill. Uh, Alan said it was a bit stronger. There, you see. Come on, boy. Come on. That's enough of that. And wait a minute. It... Well, it is a little strange that each of us got a... a brochure that said something different about this place. Well, I never got a brochure, sweetie. So there you go. What about the luggage? Anyone wonder about that? Only the Dugans brought luggage. They were the only ones packed for a trip. The rest of us brought overnight cases like you take to a hospital or like Reverend Fellows who drowned. He, he, he had just a, a beach bag. What was in your case on that? I had a change of clothes. A silver gown and a pair of silver shoes. Hey, Fellows. <laughs> Hawkshaw, the detective here. When you send a woman's body to the undertaker, what do you usually send along with it? Prettiest gown and shoes, right? God. No, no, that's all right. No, I just it's remembered. Right. I remembered that Alan gave me those pills. He got them for me. Look, you two are scaring this lady to death. Well, why would he give me those pills? Look, he, he, he went with Jeanette before we met, but there hasn't been anything since then. No. No. The... Look, the lady just got over a very bad upset. Excuse me. This sort of foolishness is gone far enough, uh, Woodruff. We're not trying to hurt anyone. We're just trying to face the facts. Stop the toboggan with your lousy facts. You want to face facts? Okay. If, if Miss Vick's body is gone, then the Indians took it, just like they took the food. Why would they take the body? They were afraid of it. How do you know? You an Indian? You don't think it's a bit strange how you wandered onto the wrong airplane? Honey, I had a lot on my mind. Still, you were expected. Your name was on the list. I don't care if my name is on 50 lists. You trying to tell me I don't know if I'm dead or alive? Oh, cut out the baloney. How would you know? You never died before. Oh, boy. Alan? Please. Don't do that. Don't, you see, because... if what you say is... true... You would, it means that, uh... Alan killed me. Listen. See, Christ. It can't be, can it? I think it's too soon. <laughs> you see. Oh. How'd you hear about us? Did you find me? I heard the I call. Some wood. Man, have they been worried about you? Is everybody okay? Hey, can you get us out of here? No, it wouldn't be safe. The plane's already overweight. I heard your Mayday call, and I got here as fast as I could to see if you're all right and what you need. Listen, son, 
I'll pay you a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to fly me to Texas. I'd like to, sir, but I can't take the chance. Can you at least tell us where we are? Well, I'm not sure exactly. Could, could you get me to Managua? You know, someplace I can get a commercial flight. Yeah, it wouldn't be safe. But I'll tell them you're all okay, and there'll be a plane in here tomorrow morning, okay? Now, are there any sick or wounded? I'll ask for a litter. Uh, just get us out of here, that's all. That's all we need. Okay. Thank you very much. We certainly appreciate your help. Right, I'm glad I could do it. Oh, thank God. I almost believed we were dead. You all feel better, huh? I huh? think I... I owe everybody an apology. I think I must have been a little insane. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. But we were both so convinced. What's the matter? We're safe now. No, we're not. He's dead. What? He's dead. Do you know who that was? It was Johnny Delmonico. I've seen him a hundred times. I know it's him, and he's dead. Remember? On our way to the airport, we heard on the radio that he died in a plane crash. Oh, boy, here we go again. That's it, that's the end of the fuel. Uh, we just have to fill to the water as best we can and drink it as it is. I guess it can't hurt us very much, considering that we're... Oh, Dave. Every day, some new torment. I pray for it to end somehow. And then I stop thinking I'll have to give you up. Uh, I'll drink to that. Find what you were looking for. Yes. Unfortunately. The Indians, what about them? The Quivero. They are an undersized and incredibly dirty tribe who bury their defective young alive. I 
participated in their peyote ceremony. From that point on, the whole experience with Ben Speaker Moore. What happened? Nothing. Nothing at all happened. With no visions and no, no dreams and just nothing. There was. Vast, empty space that no sounds and no sights and no smells. It was terrifying. I lost even the sense of my own body. And when I came to myself, was alone. There was no one there, and there were no Indians and no camp. Just nothing. I know. We've discovered that. We're all dead, aren't we? So, I wish it were so. Good man, Reverend. We're dead. <clears throat> and we're in hell. Hell? Why should we be in hell? Are we any worse than anyone else? No, I don't think so. I, we are we're people, just people like any other people. We have our good, we have our bad. And, I don't think we should be singled out for punishment. Go on. Keep it up. That's what I like to hear. We are all very much alive. It only seems like hell because... because we have all lost our illusions. I've lost my faith. I've lost my cynicism. The Dugans have lost their young love. Mrs. Larrier has lost her illusion of domestic bliss. Well, I haven't lost anything. I never gave any of these crackpots for a minute. Ask them. I would say that you had lost a great deal, Mr. Hansiker. Hmm? Your Dallas deal. Your dream of success. Hasn't it occurred to you by now that it was your partner who probably arranged this detour away from your destination and that by now your company is probably safely in his hands? You're nuts. That stuff you drank must have softened your brain. You think about it, Mr. Hunziker, because it's all gone. Just nothing. Helen and I. We found something. No. You've only perpetuated something. I don't follow you. You and Ellen are happy because you still have your dreams. Love is the most persistent of dreams. Till something comes along to shatter it. Our love is a dream. How very lucky you are, then. Well. Yeah. I guess I might as well have some of their water now. Are you sure? I didn't... I didn't tell you before. I... kept on saying I never had an accident. I was never unconscious. I almost believe in myself. Before I left for Texas, my, my partner gave a birthday party for his wife. I got plotched. I 
fell down some stairs and passed out. ourselves dead and face the prospect of life without dreams. That's the true hell, you know. Life without dreams makes it bearable. The secret is out now. You're in all the papers. Everyone knows about the portals of Eden, but it couldn't be kept a secret forever. This is our pilot, Roger Harris. That storm you had? That was Hurricane Clear. A whole coast was hit. For four days, we haven't had anything in the air. Thank God that kid pilot got through to us all and let us know that you're all OK. But what took you so long? He said there'd be a plane the next day. All the landing strips everywhere were destroyed like ours. So the few amphibians around here were in constant demand. Harris has been flying around the clock. I'm sorry I couldn't get here any sooner, but I had to get into an awful lot of other people who are much worse off than you were. You're lucky you're alive. Oh, alive? <laughs> what a lovely word. Well, let's get out of here. Yeah, hold it, hold it. First, we have to refuel and... And unload some supplies. Why don't you take a few minutes to freshen up and collect your belongings? We should be ready to leave just about the time you are. Oh, Good idea. Come, come on, on, let's go. Let's go. Come, come on. on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us I'm not even going to go home. As soon as we arrive, I'm going to call my lawyer and tell him to start the divorce proceedings right away. It is heaven after all. Darling, come on, sweetheart, let's go. I always knew you'd renege. Boy, you rich kid. You always get everything put right into your lap. Renege, yeah, renege. Listen, buddy, when we have proof... Oh, no, I'm not a wealthy, you're going to die a wealthy. God, no. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, come on. What happened to the plane? Where is the plane? The plane? Oh, an emergency down the line. Capsized boat. Twenty or so people aboard. Harris will be back tomorrow. Oh. Well, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear any plane take off. Oh, it's happening. No, sweetheart. It's nothing. Darling, it's going to be all right. That's what they do. They give you hope. Then they take it away. That's the torment. You never really know. He said that Harris was going to be here tomorrow. No, it'll never happen. Yes, it will, darling. It will. <laughs> Mr. Seacrest, I had to come to you. I couldn't live without you, David. Darling, I love you. David, yeah, I don't care what you have done. I'll forgive you anything, David. Darling, David. David. David, I love you. You're my whole life, David. I can't live without you.
Disbelief. My disbelief. 